Hey everyone, it's Katie Joy from Without a Crystal Ball. I hope you guys are having a really good Sunday night. I did my earlier stream uh, this morning or this afternoon because that was a requested one about Amber. And then tonight's stream is going to be more, I think, stream of thought and also sort of talk through some of the numbers that we're looking at. and. You know, after thinking about some of the things that have been brought up in comments and just some of the things that have been going on with some of the castmates and cast members of Teen Mom 2, it really has come to a point where it's starting to become a real, real, real question of whether or not Teen Mom OG could be canceled. Um, if you remember, or maybe you don't remember, I'll bring you up to speed. In 2009, this show started with, um, they've been on the air for like 10 years, 10 years since we've been following these girls. They were kids when we followed them. They were in high school. I mean, Farah was in high school. I mean, Caitlin and Tyler were like 14 and 15 years old. They were giving Carly up. They you, I mean, remember how skinny and little and itty bitty Caitlin was and what a wiry, wiry, wiry little like beanpole Tyler was. And you had Macy and Ryan, Macy before all of her tattoos, Ryan before his heroin addiction, um, Amber and Gary. I mean, remember them? I remember he proposed to her with a Walmart ring that he got for like $10. I mean... There has been a lot, a ton that has gone on over the past decade. And, you know, every year that this show renews, and I don't even think, it, if you haven't watched this from the beginning, you probably don't even know that it was off the air for like three years. Um, between 2012 and 2015, it was simply gone. They canceled the show. Um, it got to a point where they were like, well, they're not teen moms anymore. So we're going to just get rid of it. And then three years later in 2015, they announced the reboot of Teen Mom OG, like original girls. And they decided that they were going to break down the fourth wall and allow producers to have FaceTime on TV. And you would be able to see sort of that inner workings of how all of this worked out. And initially it was kind of cool, right? But MTV really did this sort of in response to the fact that so many of the teen moms over the years had said that this show was scripted, that they had been fed lines, that they didn't appreciate how they had been edited. And yet, despite all of the bitching and the griping and all the stuff that these people, they always were going to quit. I mean, oh my God, every season they're quitting. Amber was going to quit last year. And then she decided just recently that she had to come back because not because she needed the money, but because her fans needed her. Right. And now I was mentioning in an earlier stream about whether or not Amber could be fired for what just happened. I mean, theoretically, if Amber is convicted, and I did some digging on this um, while we were off the air from our previous stream to just give you a little bit of understanding of how the laws work in Indiana. Um, she has two felonies, you guys. She pled, she took a plea deal in 2011 as a part of her um, like assault on Gary in front of Leah when Leah was just a little itty bitty baby. And at the time she had been charged with three felonies and Amber took a plea deal and she charged, she got, um, she was like charged with two felonies or she has two felonies on her record. And Illinois has a habitual um, offender law, which means if you get three felonies for the same crime, you are automatically sentenced to the maximum for your case. So she could have a real cause for concern here if they were to use the habitual sentencing for her because that means that she could be sentenced to prison for two and a half years. 
because of the habitual laws within Indiana. This would be her third felony. That's crazy. Um, so, yeah, it's a three-strike state. They actually call it a habitual offender. That's what it's called in the world. But, yeah, it's commonly known as the three-strike state. And this would be her third strike, theoretically, because it would be her third felony, which is crazy. So if she were to get convicted of this, she would have she would be sentenced to the maximum for that, which would be two and a half years. They ain't going to wait for her. Part of the reason it went off the air the last time was because Amber was freaking locked up. I mean, they didn't have anything without Amber. So they came back, and they came back in 2015, and initially, like, Morgan Freeman, the producer of the show, didn't even want to bring Farrah back. I mean, because by this time, Farrah had already done backdoor teen mom, you know? Because remember how, like, they were off the air for a while, and that's when Farrah got into all this adult entertainment stuff, because she had to still make a living for her and Sophia. And um, they ultimately, like, that's how she ended up filming that, you know, her sex tape, which wasn't even really a sex tape. It was literally like porn. Um, and then she was like well into that. And then they just started to do the reboot. And initially when they announced the reboot, like Larry, Morgan Freeman said, or Larry Freeman, um, he said he didn't No, it's Morgan Freeman. It's cause it's the same Morgan Freeman. He said he didn't want to bring her back. They initially were not going to bring her back because of that adult film stuff. And eventually they came to terms with her and they brought her back and she was a big ratings draw because of what she had done in her off time from um, the last time she had been on air with Teen Mom. And then she was fired in 2018, 2017. And ever since she was fired, Teen Mom's ratings have been on a perpetual nose diet. And I think I said in the stream from the other day, like, remember how I said, like, nobody's watching it to watch. Um, they're not watching it to watch, you know, Amber sit on a couch. They're not watching it to watch uh, Tyler and um, Caitlin still complain and talk about this adoption. And listen, like, I'm not, you know, the, the storylines have just gotten to a place where it's just gotten super old for these people, you know, like. They, Ryan and Mackenzie left the show in 2018, if you remember, and now they're back. Amber was going to quit and she's back. Actually, she did quit. And then she like was told by the, um, the producers, she was convinced to come back. And you know, the reason why these girls keep coming back is because of money. They're making anywhere from $250,000 to $500,000 a season, depending on who they are. They can be making, you know, they could be making up to $500,000 $500, a year is what I mean. So, like, it's split in the two seasons um, because that's typically what, I mean, that's what Macy's been making. That's what... Um, Amber had reported to be making a couple years ago. Um, and then obviously with, you guys, my brain hurts. I have, my brain is so foggy. Caitlin and Tyler as well. Um, and the only one that's not making that kind of money this season is Cheyenne because she's brand new. And her contract is reportedly for $20,000 per episode, which isn't too shabby. I mean, it's not bad. But there was a lot of rumblings after Farrah left in 2017 or 2018 that the show was going to get canceled um, because they just didn't think they were going to get in the ratings draws. And to give you sort of an understanding, like when Farrah was still on the show, they were averaging around 1.3 to 1.5 million viewers. And when season seven dropped in the fall, they only debuted with like 950,000, which is like a plummet, right? That's like 400,000 down. And by the end of the season, they were averaging around 500,000 per 500,000 per week, which is nuts if you think about it. I mean, think of some of the most busiest YouTube channels on this platform. Think of it. Like James Charles, for instance, he, ups, he uploaded his, you know, welcome back video a couple weeks ago, and it had like 4 million views in a day. And Teen Mom couldn't muster up more than 500,000 in a whole week. That's insane. I mean, 
there are part-time YouTubers that are doing better in terms of their overall views than what they're getting on with Teen Mom. And so <laughs> at some point, MTV is going to be like, dude, like we're not getting the ratings here anymore. And so they thought by bringing Br Bristol Palin in, they would be able to She's got a, I mean, God damn, Bristol Palin, that's a humongous name. And I know for some of you who might not even know who she is or weren't really familiar with her, like, she's like, you know, Sarah Palin's daughter. Like, they were, like, they ran for president. Like, this family is enormous, especially in, like, the right-wing kind of conservative world. They have a huge following. And hell, hell at one point in time, and I'm not even going to lie, Bristol Palin wrote for Patheos, she, so she has a column that still exists at the company that I work for. And at one point in time, her column was the top read in all of Patheos. And she still writes on it from time to time. So she has a massive following and even she couldn't bring in numbers. And then she ended up quitting after one season because she didn't like the way that she was edited. She didn't like the way that she was portrayed. She said that MTV was more concerned about her drama with her divorce and less concerned with like how she was doing post-divorce, picking up and becoming a single mom, becoming like doing all the work hustle, doing everything she could to start businesses and take care of her kids. And all they wanted to focus on was the drama associated with the divorce and nothing to do with like life after divorce. And that's been sort of the similar, that's been a similar criticism that many of these girls have said over the years even Macy, for instance, she has ref she has said over and over and over again that her storyline perpetually revolves around Rob Ryan because she I mean, obviously it started with Ryan, but she and Ryan haven't been together for years and years and years. And so imagine Macy having to like every week talk about and be forced to talk about her relationship with Ryan or Bentley's relationship with Ryan when Bentley barely even has a relationship with Ryan. And so instead, it's MTV sort of fat feeding in and manufacturing drama that isn't even there. And Macy, this season, has been completely, completely outspoken that she's not happy with Ryan's return. And she's not happy that the sole focus of this season is going to be around her relationship with Ryan. Because come on, like, she has a restraining order against Ryan. She doesn't interact with Ryan. So imagine, like, all of her conversations taped for the show have to be talking about Ryan. It's not even real. And that's been another criticism, is that most of the show in general isn't real. They, producers feed them lines, they get them riled up. In fact, last year, Kaylin um, said online on Twitter that there was a scene where they wanted to get Isaac upset. And so producers egged him on and egged him on and egged him on and got him so worked up that he started crying. And then they started filming. And that's been kind of a common issue. I mean, if you remember when Leah and was going through her divorce with her pill addiction and like Corey and Jeremy met together and they sat at the table and they talked about her pill addiction, that was totally staged. Um, Farah has been super outspoken about how so many of the shows are your fed lines, your fed drama. When her parents were fighting, a lot of that was manufactured by producers. Producers would like get people heated up and listen, like that's part of their job as a producer of a reality show is to create and fact manufacture drama. But the problem is, is that these girls, their lives themselves have gotten to a point where there's literally nothing to talk about. There's nothing going on. Macy is a mother of three kids now. She's like a soccer mom. You know, her life is not teen mom anymore. She has a comfy life. She's got businesses with her husband, Taylor. They have three children. They've been doing really well for the most part. And then you have to bring up and dig up Ryan again, who Ryan, let's go there. In 2018, he and Mackenzie said that they were gonna leave the show. And he decided that he was going to leave the show because he didn't like the way that he was being portrayed on the show. And then producers actually decided to remove him from the show as well. It was kind of like a joint split because they didn't want to feature another person struggling with a dependency on drugs because they already had that all well in place for with Amber. So he left in 2018. But guess what? He's back this year. And you know why he's back? Because he and Mackenzie had no income 
and the only way that they could make money and like they had been living with Larry and Jen prior to this season and now they're living in a home that was previously owned by Larry and Jen so but so they basically gave him their old house and they moved into another house or he lives in the house that he grew up with and Larry and Jen live in a different house and he's doing this because he's got another mouth to feed with Jagger and now he's got another one on the way and the only reason he's back is because he needs money it has nothing to do with wanting to be there hell in last week's episode he didn't even want to talk to MTV producers because he had too much anxiety I mean, that's like where these people are at. Amber doesn't want to be there. Amber wants to quit. All Amber does is lay on her couch. And how many times are we going to listen to Ky T like Taylor or I'm sorry, Tyler and Caitlin rehash an adoption that happened 10 years ago? Obviously, adoption and open adoption is ongoing and there's always going to be like struggles and it there's this off, off like there's a lot of loss with adoption like hell. I have plenty of friends that have given children up and I understand very holistically like and very like from the heart like how traumatic that is but I can't imagine for either one of them having to live in a space where MTV producers are continually making them rehash and discuss and go through the adoption every single year can't be good for their mental health can't be good for Carly I mean Carly never asked for this and Carly hasn't even been on the show and Teresa hasn't wanted her on the show and she hasn't been on the show in years so now the kids that they have are kids that they had in their 20s. And that's the other thing. Amber's like 29 years old. These are not teen moms anymore. <laughs> These are women that are approaching 30. And we're still watching them from the teen mom lens. The only reason the show is still on the air is because there are loyal fans and because MTV hasn't been able to find anything to replace it. If you remember, they tried to relaunch another series about like teen mom, young and something, and that went nowhere. It went, no, it got canceled. Um, and then they have another series they're trying to unload, but that's gone nowhere too. It's not getting the same sort of ratings hold. And TLC, another network, has started their own like unexpected series that's doing better than teen mom OG is doing. Now, to give you an understanding of like what it looked like before Farah left, when Farah was in the show, like I said, she had their ratings were 1.3 million per week on average. That's what they're pulling in. These are their numbers. If you look all the way over here, whoops, at the very end here, those are the numbers. So these are the weeks in succession. So this was the th second week with they had 849,000 views. Um, the next week they had, I think in the 700s, maybe, let me look here. Yeah, 778. And the other one I think is seven, 778, 778 and 884 and it and it debuted at like 900 something so it's so it's it's just continuing to fall again and they brought in Cheyenne and Bristol thinking it was going to bring things back up but the fact is is the the ratings have never recovered since Farrah left because Farrah's storyline whether you liked it or not was the number one reason why a lot of people were tuning in she was polarizing. She was, she had businesses outside of Teen Mom. She was one of the few that actually had successfully done some business, like she had started some businesses. She had done adult entertainment, which brought in new fans to watch her. And her drama and her treatment of people was a huge draw. Whether we liked it or not, that's the truth. And in the world of reality TV, Everyone wants to, everyone tunes in for the villain. They do not tune in for the good girls. They don't. Otherwise, shows that portrayed happiness would be the common draw on reality TV. And we know that's not true. The, the shows that do the best are train wrecks. Why do you think Mama June has still been on TV all of these years? It's because she can't stay out of trouble. So when 
when stuff was tanking this fall, there was a ton of discussion at MTV about canceling the show. And it didn't get renewed right away. There was a lot of fear that they weren't going to renew. And then they brought in Cheyenne and then they got Ryan to come back and they gave in to some of the demands of the girls to allow them a little bit more control, thinking this would help things. But I don't know if you've watched many of the new episodes. It's boring. I tried. I really, really, really tried to watch. But even with Ryan coming back, he doesn't interact. <laughs> so it's really not even that exciting. And Macy's discussions about Ryan are kind of boring. And Caitlin and Tyler talking about adoption for the third 375th time is boring. And nothing that Amber does is interesting. And they were betting on Amber to be the number one draw now because she's the most dramatic of the girls that are left. And so will her recent arrest bring a spike into ratings? Maybe, but then MTV has this massive issue on the line of now they have a third time felon on their show. And if they continue to allow her to be on the show, they're almost at this point condoning or like semi approving child abuse and a domestic and domestic and domestic assault and domestic battery, which are big no nos, really terrible. And people from other reality shows have been fired for a lot less than what Amber has done. I mean, the fact that she has been incarcerated, the fact that she has been, imp you know, this is this will be her third felony if she's convicted of this. And this time it involved an infant that was at a year old, you guys. That's a really big deal. So, you know, MTV, they can't say anything probably now because they know if they do, that show is going to get shit canned. Like if they fire her, nobody's going to watch it anymore. The only person that's going to bring anything, any draw in now would be her. But none of this, they weren't even filming. They weren't even filming when that altercation went down last week. And they've already filmed this season. So, you know, that is like, is this show going to go on? Will people even watch it anymore? And then a lot of people are starting to say that they might protest if they don't get rid of her because like, how are you going to support somebody that has such a violent history to continue to be on the show? It's pretty despicable if you think about it. Um, And this specific, I just saw a comment in the in the live chat that this specific um, controversy could absolutely, um, you know, increase ratings. But it also isn't a, this isn't the kind of thing that any network, in the world of networks advertising these days, and I'll tell you honestly, because I'm a creator, here, but I'm also like in the advertising or in the writing world, advertisers are super skittish these days. They don't want to be tied to any controversy. They don't want to be tied to abuse, to neglect, to violence. They don't want to be tied to cast members that have very messy histories, that have done really terrible things. Um, that's why a lot of times with some of these shows, they get rid of them. Now, there's some networks like clearly MTV and TLC that have no moral compass and don't really care. But, you know, at this point, I think based on the ratings numbers, and I'll show these again, this show is not going anywhere good. And it's never going to, I don't see this show recovering in terms of like, maybe they'll get a spike in viewers this week because of the arrest. But I don't know that it'll really like, do anything and the same is going to happen on teen mom too because teen mom too for its own part had been able to maintain steady viewership over the last several years despite teen mom falling um they still had janelle who was their number one draw and for drama and she's gone now and so i would expect and you should probably expect that when the next season of teen mom 2 debuts there's going to be a sharp decline in ratings because 
of all of the people on that show, Janelle consistently brought the most drama. She brought the most fights. She had the most like what the F situations. You never knew what was going to happen with her. And her stuff was not faked. I mean, she's just that off the wall. And her between her and Barbara and all of it, it's it's I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that Teen Mom OG is probably on its last legs. And maybe that's not a bad thing, you guys. Um, some of these girls just need to grow up. They need to do something else with their lives. Um, and MTV, I and for some, like all intents and purposes to me, I think their contributions to the show and being on the show has kind of stunted them emotionally by continuing to be on a show where they are not forced to get real full-time jobs. They, many of them didn't have to go to college. Um, haven't had to have like normal routines, haven't had to figure out how to actually navigate life because they've always had a very cushy paycheck. Um, it's made some of them extremely lazy. I mean, look at Caitlin and Tyler. They are so lazy. <laughs> they are so lazy. And then Amber, they're like the three laziest people ever. And the reason they stay on the show is because what else are they going to do? They're never going to make that kind of money doing anything else. They're just not that interesting. And none of them have education to fall back on. So they're going to just have to go into the reality TV abyss and just go from siphon to show to show to show. But at some point, these kids, and this has been the number one thing that I think of as a parent. And I apologize if some of you think that my streams are rambling. But a lot of times when I'm doing these streams, it's me sort of just thinking out loud and thinking maybe not always cohesively, but one thing I have thought about a lot throughout the years is how much these children have never had a normal child life. And they've never had private moments. All of their most like embarrassing things that happen to their parents are on TV. That's going to affect them. I mean, Macy was already talking about it this week that Bentley is starting to get really affected by Ryan always being in the news and all of his arrests and all of his issues and then having that constantly play out on TV and then having their friends know about what's going on in their private lives. These are the, I mean, the real casualties in all of this are the children that never had a choice of whether or not they were going to be on the show. And they're going to be the ones that have been ultimately be damaged by this more than the adults because once their parents are done, their parents are going to have nothing to fall back on. And then, so there's that aspect of like the instability of what's going to happen next. But then everything of their lives up until this point has been filmed. And what child wants all of their worst moments and all of their mom and dad's fights and all of their family struggles and all of the arrests to be public record and be for everyone to know. We already know what happens with child actors and how they struggle to work and how they struggle to transition from childhood to adulthood because they're not allowed to have childhoods. And in the same breath, it's very similar for these kids. They've never been allowed to really have their own childhood. Everyone knows who Bentley is. Everyone knows who Leah is. Everyone knows, um, who Carly is, even though we don't see Carly. Everyone knows who, um, I don't even know who Cheyenne's kid is, but everyone knows who Sophia is. And Cheyenne's addition is just really odd because all of the kids are way older and Cheyenne's got a little young kid. It doesn't even make sense to have her on the show because she's not a teen mom. She's in her 20s. And the only reason she's on there is because she was like a popular draw from Are You the One and What the Challenge? And because Corey's hot, I mean, that's really not a reason to be on the show. They don't fit. They don't match. Their stories aren't interesting. So it's, I think it's gotten to a place where this, um, this show has definitely run its course. And it's going to start to get to a point where you're, you know, when like a good show just keeps on going and keeps on going. And then it just gets so bad that you're like, God, why didn't you end like three seasons earlier? Like, remember how, if you watch the Gilmore Girls, <laughs> remember how season seven was just terrible? And you're like, why didn't you just end last season? 
<laughs> why didn't you end after Amy left, the producer? <laughs> like, why did you keep going? Or 90210, Beverly Hills 90210, which by the way is doing a reboot. And I'm going to do a whole show about that because that was one of my childhood favorite shows. Um, but even at towards the end of 90210, after 10 years on the air, it got to the point in that last season where it was just like, oh my God, why are you guys still doing this show? This is so far removed from the original premise. You've gotten so far off base. It's just gotten so weird. Even like Big Bang Theory just ending this year, even though they still had high ratings, I stopped watching Big Bang Theory a couple years ago because it just wasn't the same show anymore. It hadn't been the same show for a while. And sometimes the hardest thing to do and the hardest thing to realize is that sometimes things need to end. And I think this is one of those times where things need to end and they need to end fast. <laughs> um, none of these kids are benefiting from it at this point. And the, and the adults could benefit from actually having to go get real jobs. All right. Um, so from that perspective, that's really all I had for tonight, you guys. I wasn't really planning a super long show on this, but... I wanted to address a couple things um, for the comments because as this channel is growing, we're getting a lot more comments, and which is great. I am so happy that you are you are here, that you feel engaged. But I have I have rules on my channel, and I don't be nasty, yelling at me, calling me names, um, accusing me of different things, mocking me. That will automatically get your comments deleted and you'll be removed from the channel. I don't have a tolerance. Today, after actually admitting that I had ADHD, I can't tell you how many people in comments were rude to me and going off at me about how what a horrible person I am for ADHD and to go get on my meds. And that's not how I work on this page. Like I'm honest about my mental health because it frames everything that I do but then yelling at me about having ADHD and being honest about it, that doesn't give you the, the invitation to belittle me and tell me to go get on my meds or tell me my meds aren't working because you have no idea what I look like when I'm not on my meds and how crazy I can get kids. So you just be thankful that I'm on the meds I am today because old Katie, if she would have saw those comments, would have been in a fight with your face instead of just deleting them. And I don't have a tolerance for like bad language in on my comments. I try to think I try to keep things pretty clean. Um, also, bad language in the chat will get you booted. So just be respectful. If you don't agree with everything I say, I don't. That's that's wonderful. I don't want you to agree with everything that I have to say. But just being nasty for the sake of nasty. I don't have time for it and I frankly don't need to read it and then you don't have to yell at me if the comments are deleted. So we have rules. You can check them out in the community section of this page to find out how you can participate and what will get you banned from our channel um, and what won't. But we try to be respectful and hey you guys I know I'm critical of other people but I'm providing commentary on things that are going on that are trending topics and that means that when people put their lives out, commentary means I talk about it. I wouldn't be talking about these people if they hadn't been on the air for 10 years. All right? And I realize some of you are going to be very loyal fans to them. You'll be very disappointed by some of the stuff I say, and that's fine too. I've been a fan of the show. Trust me. Nobody gets it more than you guys do. I watched... Every episode in the beginning, I, I saw all of their teen, I mean, I saw all their damn 16 and pregnant episodes. That's how far back I go. So I hope you guys, I would love to know what your thoughts are. I would love to know if you agree with me about the stuff with the kids, if you agree with me that the show might be on its last leg, or what do you even think, like, will Amber's arrest put a spike of viewers into it? I'm going to be honest. I'm probably not going to tune in this week because the fact that MTV has said nothing really concerns me. I don't condone violence. I don't, I'm not a supporter of domestic violence, but my number one, number one thing that will always make me step away from something is if a show has children that are being abused and that are a part of the show that have been abused. 
And being that an, a baby was a part of this um, fight that just happened last week, I don't want any part of it. I don't care how much drama she could have. That baby was a part of an altercation where she got violent and got charged with a felony. That's a big deal, you guys. So let me know what your thoughts are. Again, you are welcome to disagree with me, but please don't be nasty. I will always be kind to you, even if you say things that you don't agree with me. And trust me, plenty of my subscribers don't agree with me, but we have banter. I comment and I read your comments all the time. I respond as much as I can. I'm not that above it. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for tuning in every single day. It's been amazing watching this channel grow. And for all of the people that give me supportive comments all day long, thank you so much. It's always hard to read the negative comments, but I don't, it doesn't escape me when I hear and see your amazing comments about why you're enjoying this channel. And I want to be able to give you guys a mix of everything that we do. Teen Mom is not the only thing that I care about, but it's one of many topics that I cover. So I think, in summary, that this is going to be the end of Teen Mom OG soon. Will it be this month? Will it be next season? It's, it's coming to an end. All right, you guys, make sure you follow me on Twitter. And then if you want to, I never pitch my Patreon, but I do have a Patreon account. If you're interested in becoming a patron, you can do so for as little as like five bucks a month. I have a patron link in my descriptions. And I always, as always, you can check out my column. I wrote an article about Amber today, so you can check that out as well. And let me know if you have any questions. My Twitter handle is at... W-O-A Crystal Ball. Have a great night, everyone. Bye.